There's been a lot of talk about defund the police. Is that a good slogan? What does it mean? Is it going to work? Is it going to divide people? I'm going to say right now, by the end of this video, based on what I show you, if you are not on board with defund the police, either because of the slogan or because of what it does, I'm going to say that at least half of you that are skeptical, by the end of this video, you're going to be on board. Because a lot of, uh, a lot of the apprehension with defund the police is simply because people don't understand what the hell it means, and they're afraid that it's going to divide people. Well, I'm going to show you that when you actually tell people what it means, that they're on board. And regardless of if they're on board or not, it is the correct thing to do, and we have to fight for it to get more people on board with it. So first, let me show you where the debate currently is. So this is what Democratic leaders largely are saying. Stacey Abrams calls defund the police debate a false choice. We must have reformation and transformation. Now, this is, reform is what has already been done. In Minneapolis, they did all of the Obama era reforms that were recommended. Look what happened. Nothing changed. You have to actually take the power away from the police unions, from the police departments. And I'm going to show you how much power they actually have in a minute here. But first, um, Cenk Uger here of the Young Turks, who, look, I'm only using Jenk's tweet as an example of what is being said. I'm not doing this to attack Jenk, but he tweets out here, let me pick up on what Stacey Abrams just said. Hashtag defund the police slogan is being used to divide us. She called for transformation of police. That's much stronger than just reform, but not distracting like defunding. Transform the police is appealing to most people and sounds strong. Now, <laughs> okay. I mean, there are so many different ways to attack this argument, and I got it all laid out here. So I'm going to have, you know, maybe some trouble here getting out, getting it out all at once because there is so much I want to say at the same time. Um, but this is not transform or reform can mean so many things. As I'm going to show you a tweet later that puts it in perfect terms, defund actually causes whoever supports that to follow through with defunding because defund the only argument you can have is how much defunding but there is no confusion about what defund is defund is taking money away so the only debate is how much but yet when you come to a transformer or, or reform that can mean anything any politician can say oh i support uh reforming the police but what does that mean so let me um show you this tweet here of this poll from YouGov, America, Yahoo News. Here is finally a poll question where they actually put what it means, what defunding means, in the question. Would you favor or oppose gradually redirecting police funding toward increasing the number of social workers, drug counselors, and mental health experts responsible for responding to nonviolent emergencies? Favor 49%. Already! Already, at the very beginning of this debate that we are having now, already it has a plurality of support, almost a majority. So, and I'm not showing this to say this is why we, we are supporting it. I'm saying this to, to show you that there really isn't all that much work to do to get the public on board. So, we are already starting from a good place here. So, this is what it means. Moving resources away, reallocating resources from the police department to other areas to deal with issues that the police should not be handling. Now, let me show you the budgets. U.S., this is from uh, Reuters, U.S. cities spend big on law enforcement, police departments, and corrections are often the biggest expense for U.S. cities. So as a percentage of general spending, this is from 2017 uh, figures, Oakland, 40%, over 40. Chicago, near there, Minneapolis, Houston, Orlando, uh, St. Louis, Detroit, Atlanta, Los Angeles, Baltimore, uh, Contra Costa County, New York. You see here, massive percentage of their budgets go into policing. Now, I'm going to show you a more specific example in a second here, but this is what has gone on over the years. There's been increases to police budgets, meanwhile, cuts to health care, cuts to education, cuts to infrastructure. And what is the result of that? The result is that the focus of these cities then is on criminalizing people instead of on helping people through healthcare, education, or other means. 
So let me show you Detroit as one specific example here. Rashida Tlaib, she's from Detroit, tweeted out, When we say defund police, what we mean is people are dying, and we need to invest in people's livelihoods instead. Example, Detroit spent $294 million on police last year, and $9 million on health care. This is uh, systemic oppression in numbers. So look at these figures. This red bar here, $294 million on the police, health care all the way down here at $9 million. You see a budget like this, and it really puts it into perspective. A lot of people really were not aware, myself included, of how much money was poured into police departments compared to everything else. And it's because of the power of these police unions. And this is also an issue in Canada. From the conversation here, 99% of Ontario's funding for community safety and well-being pads police budgets. So the, the, the approach to, to safety, community safety, is always put more, more money into police as opposed to investing into the communities. <clears throat> now, I want to show you this because the argument oftentimes is, well, defund the police, not a popular slogan, so why are we backing it? Take a look at Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, in just in 2018, did not have a majority of support. And look how quickly that shifted. You, we are now seeing over plus 25, <clears throat> excuse me, in support for Black Lives Matter, where before it was way down, minus five. So before, majority did not support Black Lives Matter. Now, huge majority supports Black Lives Matter. All it takes is some education, and people are on board. Now, I'm going to show you much better ways to frame this here. So, Jesse Brenman tweeted this out. This is fantastic. Says, quote, defund the police is just so specific, you know? It sounds like something that you want politicians to actually do. Wouldn't it be better to say change the police or reimagine the police or something that doesn't mean anything and that everyone can claim to have done? <laughs> Humorously pointing out here how politicians are able to, you know, dodge uh, the reality of what they actually support with very general phrases like change the police or transform the police or reform the police. There are conservative politicians, Republicans coming out now and saying, yes, I support reforming the police. But so that makes them sound, oh, very progressive. Conservative politicians are now moving in, in a very liberal direction. What the hell do they mean by that, though? Defund the police has an actual meaning. It means something. It means taking money away. So the only discussion then is how much. And at the same time, as I think I'll get to in, in some other tweets here, defund the police also pulls the conversation to the left. So you are actually so because of that, you are seeing conservative politicians now taking the reform position, which they in the past you never would have seen that. But defund the police has now moved the conversation to the left. And in fact, I, this is why I, I also support people saying abolish the police, because that also pulls the conversation to the left. And then all of a sudden, defund the police now sounds more doable. So I got more tweets here. This is from uh, Brown and Joy Gray. Series of tweets here that are also that, that also break this down um, in really clear terms. So she says here, people keep saying, "quote If you mean reform, say reform." But defund is confusing. But reform has dozens of meanings, so the term is as easily co-opted as it is misunderstood. Defund has a clear meaning. The only ambigu uh, ambiguity is amount of money folks want to take away, which is what I've been saying. She goes on here. The other useful thing about defund is that any explanation invites a conversation about what we should affirmatively re refund with that money, which triggers a conversation about big structural intersectional solutions beyond woke sloganeering. We're talking about material change. So this is the other great part about defund. Not only does it pull the conversation to the left, but it also then starts a conversation about, okay, well, if you're supporting defunding, then where do you think that other money should go? Where should that money from the cops from these police forces, where should that money now now be turned to? Last tweet here. Because it's a structural solution that gets to root causes, the defund slash refund uh, 
framing even addresses the black on black crime specter. Funding, education, housing, social services, etc., will lower violence all around. The more I think about it, the more I like it. So it starts a conversation. And you see, as I pointed out earlier, when you give at least, you know, just a sentence, this is one sentence. This is not, you know, three pages of a report. One sentence. The reallocation of resources. Do you support essentially redirecting police funding to other areas and maybe moving those, resp- uh, those responsibilities into other departments, into other areas? People support that. The idea that you have this force, the police force, as this one-size-fits-all approach clearly has not worked out. Mental health calls often don't end well when the police show up. What if you instead you had mental health care professionals show up unarmed? There's a much better chance that that situation is going to end, going to be de-escalated because they are experts in that field. Or domestic disputes or homelessness. I mean, these are various areas that often the cops are called towards. But if that money was just put into health care, public housing, other areas, you are able to deal with them in, in, a, in a way that is non-violent. And people support that. And it doesn't take all that long to explain. So if you combine all of this, understanding what defunding means, essentially reallocating resources, combining that with showing the percentage of police, uh, of uh, city budgets that are spent on policing and get specific with a place like Detroit and then talk about how defund actually means something and if you commit to it, you actually have to uh, follow through with it. I mean, defund the police is, I think, the perfect slogan. Now, the other argument's going to be, well, it's going to turn, like, say you're a politician. The argument is politicians shouldn't say defund the police because it's going to turn people off. Let's say you, you take that position. Okay, fine. Take that position, but there is a way to still support defunding without having to say the slogan. So even though I don't really agree with you, as I mean, we've seen Rashida Tlaib uh, just straight, straight up point out, She's for defunding the police. But say you take the position that, no, defund the police is going to turn a lot of people off because you have to actually explain it. I know people always say voters are dumb. They don't know what's going on. Okay, fine. Then all a politician has to do in response to a question is do what they always do. Don't answer the question. (laughs) Say you're asked by a news reporter. Do you support defunding the police? Me as a politician, I can say, Well, look, I think we should look at these police budgets. If you take a look at Detroit, they spent $294 million on policing while spending $9 million on health care. I think we should look at reallocating some of those resources to other areas because there are ways to de-escalate many of these situations that police are are, are given. There are ways to de-escalate them that the police just can't handle. So if we reallocate those resources to other areas when looking at these city budgets, then yes, I think it makes sense to move this money around. How about, was that so hard? Was that so hard? (laughs) I did that literally on the spot. I don't have a script here. (laughs) Did that on the spot just with this basic information that we have. It's a reallocation of resources. That's it. So if you're afraid of the slogan, fine. Even though I don't agree with you, but whatever. Fine. You can still, as a politician, publicly support defunding the police just through different terms to make it a little more palatable to people. So I hope this has helped you (laughs) understand this because there is so much misinformation and just, we really need to understand at the very least, what this is doing is pulling the conversation to the left, which is needed because for so long, both parties, Democrats and Republicans have been all about force, force, force. The police need more money, more money, more money. That's all it's been about for, I mean, 30, 40 years at this point. Because Democrats never wanted to be seen as as being soft on crime. So the crime bill really was, was the, the real turning point in terms of solidifying the Democratic Party as the second tough on crime party. And now we are seeing the need. I mean, 
the need was there back then, but we are seeing now the need in the forefront in terms of having to change the conversation and having to roll that back into looking at these issues with a clear mind and understanding that the police cannot be put into all of these situations because it just has not helped. Clearly, it has not helped. So when looking at budgets like this, when, when putting all this information together, I think it's clear that defund the police makes the most sense.